Having your own garden brings a lot of benefit. Not only is it healthier, it gives you an exercise, it gives your family something to do, it also helps you to be more self-reliant, especially if you're using heirloom seeds where you can reclaim the seeds. So what I want to talk about today though is heirloom seeds, some of the advantages of heirloom seeds over hybrid seeds and then from hybrid seeds to GMO seed. When you go to the grocery store, you really don't know the origin of your fruits and vegetables. They could come from a different country and not even knowing what they're doing down there with pesticides, uh, E. coli, and all the other things that surround that. And growing your own vegetables really takes care of a lot of those issues and concerns. But to me, if you're preparing for your future, being self-reliant and having your own food source is a number one. All right, we have a number of heirloom seeds and we have some hybrid seeds as well. And we're going to just talk about some of the advantages, disadvantages, why I think that you should really go with heirloom seed. I'm going to tell you that right off the bat. The number one reason that I like heirloom seed is because you can reclaim the seed. These are open pollinated seeds. And that means that you can reclaim the seeds and that you can pass these seeds down from plants once you grow the vegetables. Now here we have the hybrid variety. And what hybrid really means is that you can take two different plant species, cross-pollinate them, and develop a whole entire different plant. And to bring some of the advantages of the good out of each of the plants. And so really, in theory, this makes a better plant. But the big problem with the hybrid seeds is that you can't harvest the seeds and that if you do, you're going to have a much lesser plant. It'll either be one or the other plants that were developed into this one and even then, they're typically not going to be as good, uh, and sometimes not at all. So really, you're taking a chance with hybrid versus heirloom in reclaiming your seed. You're going to have a lot better option with the heirloom, and hence the name, heirloom. These are to be able to be passed down, not only to your garden, but also to your family and friends. Second thing is, these are true to type. What you plant, that's what you're going to get. And as you continue to pass these down in your garden, you're going to start to develop uh, certain type uh, plants that you like better, certain uh, type squash, certain type beans, peanuts, whatever it is. And you're going to develop a history for yourself. Yes, you can go to the store and buy the same, in fact, Better Boy. I mean, you know, we all know about Better Boy tomatoes. You can go buy those over and over. But a lot of times, you know, you have different companies or you have, uh, you know, they could even change some of the things about how they're pre preparing these seeds. So, you know, you know what you're getting here, and of course, again, you're reclaiming them. Now, a lot of people will say that you spend more money on your heirloom seeds, and that's not necessarily the case. The one thing about buying your hybrid seed, a lot of times they're cheap, a lot of times they're like a dollar or whatever, you don't get that many seeds in the bottom. But of course, with heirloom seeds, you typically get more seed for your money. But here's the real kicker. If you're buying heirloom seeds, you buy them once and you reclaim the seed, you don't even have to go back to the store. So kind of like on the same theory of annual plants versus perennials. Even though you have to replant, you can continue to see that plant every year. And so same thing with these. This really gives you a lot of peace of mind. Now if you're buying heirloom seeds from a feed and seed store, one of the things you can do is buy locally proven uh, seed. Now, one important thing, though, is to talk to local gardeners, talk to local farmers, and see what they like best, what grows the best, what they've had success with, what has not been so good. That'll give you a lot of information on what you need to grow. These are nationally made plants. They're all over. In fact, it's got a national map on the back to tell you what time to plant uh, and where to grow. Really, your area is going to be specific for certain plants. And you're also going to have certain pests and certain diseases that are going to hit your area. And the plants that you plant could be more resilient. And over time, will be more resilient to those problems. So there's a history behind this. And, of course, that goes into the next thing is the history. These plants are non-modified. Yeah, some of them have been developed into certain plants. But these have been done naturally over a period of time to develop what's best and what's been proven. Uh, this has a history here in the United States or whatever country that you're in. And so you have something that you not only have a history with, that has a long history, and then you can pass that information down to your children and your grandchildren. And I know I did a lot of farming with my grandfather. He, he, did, he had a farm probably two miles from here, and he grew a lot of vegetables. 
one of the things that we used to grow a lot were watermelon. Now, when I moved up to North Carolina into the mountains of Western North Carolina, I planted watermelon and it didn't grow at all. And then come to find out after talking to a few people, I realized that watermelon does not grow well in that area. And so th that will also save you money again by talking to local growers, local gardeners and farmers. Now with that, with the heirloom, you will really begin to develop your garden and it'll take years to really perfect it, but it's something you can grow to and something you can understand and learn. And guys, I'll tell you, one of the things that really scares me about a lot of guys that are just buying the seed banks and putting them back and not planting their seed, it's a tough job to really understand gardening and what all it takes to garden. And then, of course, reclaiming your seed, canning, doing all the things that are around what you need to know about gardening. And so don't wait until the SHTF. Because, number one, you're going to be in a panic. Number two, you've got to wait for growing season to happen. And then, even if you do, you could have a crop failure, and then you're just out. So go ahead and start using your seed. I would, uh, you know, of course, advise you to have some seed put back in case you do have a crop failure. But having these seeds on hand and using them, it's just super important. Now, the theory is that the hybrid seeds are more vigorous they yield more, they produce more, they're more resilient to pesticides and to uh, insects and pests and disease. And that's not necessarily the case. Really, once you develop your heirloom seed and what you have, they can be very resilient and produce a lot of good fruit. And there's no modifying of anything. They're open pollinated, they're naturally uh, developing, they're naturally cross pollinating, and they're doing all the things that nature intended. And you know, that's one of the things a lot of times, not necessarily with hybrid, because that's not really an extreme, but with GMO, you know, really getting in there and changing some of the DNA in the plant and playing really with nature. You know, God intended. Uh, certain things to grow a certain ways and not that there's not benefits to maybe some of the things that they're doing with the idea but one problem is you know is a theory that the bees in North America are disappearing because of a lot of the GMO crop yields and that they're going in and uh, they're going away from these um, modified GMO seeds and plants and of course that's not been proven but that is uh, one thing too is that's been a theory is that a lot of times with a GMO crop next to a heirloom crop that because of cross pollination tampers with the heirloom quality and a lot of times the seeds aren't able to be reclaimed and we're losing seed so there's a lot of things that we need to be careful of and I guess that's one reason why just getting back to a very organic and natural way to grow your vegetables and knowing where your seeds come from having good quality heirloom seeds that you know will produce good seed. Uh, to me, it's just a no-brainer. And it could be a little more work at first, but once you get started, it's not really going to add that much. Now, this is my emergency seed bank. This has been in storage in a cool, dry place for a while. I did a video on this a couple of years ago. Uh, they no longer put it in the 30 caliber uh, ammo tins. It's in more of a cylinder like this. But this is an excellent company with um, all the different type seeds. In fact, there are 23 non-hybrid seeds here, but they also um, have other packages. And so there's just different ones that you can use. Uh, everything is listed right here on the side, which will be with any of your seed companies. But this has been a really cool little system, and there's also information. Typically, when you buy these seed packs, you'll get some, here's a seed saver guide and a growing guide. Next is this Texas Ready. I really like Texas Ready, and one of the reasons specifically is because the seeds, you can see them. They're just open. But these seeds are going to be actually a little more vulnerable to the elements or to your environment, which with the Mylar bags, with the seeds inside, it's going to have a little more protection. Uh, but I really like to be able to see the seed. I really like Texas Ready also because it includes this great book, and this comes in the pack. Also, there's other information as well. Then we have the Safe Harvest Seed Bank, and these are open pollinated seeds as well, uh, heirloom seeds. And this is from Directive 21, my buddy Jeff, a great guy, great company. And he also sells a lot of the Berkeys, which I have two Berkeys that I got from Jeff, and I highly recommend Directive 21. The seeds are in Mylar, and there are pictures and information on each package. And I'll have Directive 21 website, uh, Texas Ready website, and the Emergency Seed Bank website down in the description below and you can just go ahead and check them out all three great companies a lot of times people put these back 
for a rainy day for an emergency SHTF situation and they're not using them now. Listen, you need to be using your seeds, whatever they are, now. Don't wait until you are depending on them because you need to have some experience under your belt. I want to highly encourage you, if you haven't already started your garden, you really need to. Get involved, growing your own food, become more independent, more self-reliant. You're going to live healthier and just it tastes better. There are just so many advantages and specifically heirloom seeds. I would definitely recommend that over hybrid and definitely over GMO. Take care of your health, take care of your family, grow your own food, and be better prepared. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. If you've never started a garden. And guys, I'll tell you, to be honest with you, you know, but still the same kind of uh, deal. Yeah, I need to replant my garden so I can go ahead and reclaim these tins. This will be an heirloom with a bunch of ammunition in it. Now I've done it. I got to get out and get my tiller going. <laughs>